Hi, this lesson's on dividing decimals by decimals, part one of two. So you want to definitely make sure that you do watch both parts of this video. So this is part one. So part one covers NS 2.3 um, on how to fluently divide multi-digit decimals using the standard algorithm. You want to make sure you have your composition notebook, a sharpened pencil, please. All right, the first thing we're going to do is we're going to review. You have had this in the previous division lessons, but I want to make sure that we're really clear because throughout this lesson, you're going to hear me refer to um, terminology that you guys need to understand. So when we're dividing, the number that's underneath the box is called the dividend. The number that you divide by is called your divisor, and that's the number that's on the outside of the box, this guy right over here. The quotient is your answer. So if I were to give you the example of 17 and 85 hundredths divided by 2 and 5 tenths, the first number is your dividend. That would be the number that would go underneath the box. The divisor is 2 and 5 tenths. That's the outside number. So basically, this guy goes here, and the first number would go over there. So let's start our notes. Remember you're going to start with writing the notes on the left side of your composition notebook. The title of this is Dividing Decimals by Decimals. Now remember, as you're taking notes, you're going to need to pause your video throughout so that you keep up with things. So let's start with step one. So step one, what we're going to do is we're going to move the decimal in the divisor to the end of the number. Step two, we're going to move the decimal in the dividend, that's the number under the box, the same number of spots as in the divisor. You want to make sure that you're fair, fair to both numbers. What you do to one number, you must do to the other. So if we moved one guy's decimal, we better move the other guy's decimal as well. So step three is the easiest one. We're going to recopy the problem. Because you're going to have arrows all over the place, it's best if you recopy the problem because you're going to end up getting like having four decimals in those numbers. So definitely recopy it much neater with the decimals in their new positions. Step four, we're going to go ahead and take care of that decimal right away. So we're going to slide the decimal up to the quotient line. And then finally, step five, we're just going to divide like normal. And that's it. So I know it seems kind of a lot, but once we go through the examples, it really won't be too bad. All right. So now we're going to write on the right side of our paper, starting with the example 18 and 85 hundredths divided by 2 fifths, 2 and 5 tenths, excuse me. So the first thing we need to do is we cannot divide when our numbers are written horizontally like this. So we do have to set them up with like the box and everything. So we're going to recopy this problem. 17 and 85 hundredths goes under the box. So this is the part that we talked about where we're going to be moving decimals. Now look at the 2 and 5 tenths. That's the divisor. You cannot divide by a number that's basically the number 2 and a half. So we need to take its decimal and move it over to the end of the number. When we do that, it only has to move one spot over to the right. So to be fair, what you do to one number, you must do to the other. So I move the other guy's decimal over just one spot to the right. Now you'll notice the decimal underneath the box, which is our dividends decimal, is now going to be between the 8 and the 5, whereas before it was in front of the 8, now it's going to be after the 8. So we're going to recopy our problem neatly with our decimal in its new spot. So we're going to slide that decimal up and we're going to begin to divide. Let me slide that decimal up. There we go. All right, so 25 goes into 178 seven times. Seven times 25 gives us 175. So now I'm going to subtract and I get three and I brought down my five. And now I start all over again. 25 goes into 35 just one time. One times 25 is 25. Subtract, I get 10. So you'll notice here that I had run out of numbers, so this is the part where you have to keep adding zeros here. So we're going to add one zero at a time. So I noticed that I wrote the zero, you could see it in pink next to my blue five, and I brought it down. 
So now we have how many times does 25 go into 100? It goes into it exactly four times. So when I subtract, um, I get zero. And basically, I am now done with my problem. Let's try another problem. So our next example is 54 and 4 tenths divided by 1 and 7 tenths. So the first thing we need to do is recopy the problem so that um, we're using the box. So what I would like for you guys to try now is pause the video, but move your decimals over and recopy the problem so you can see if we've got it set up properly. So pause now. So let's see what you did. So notice that I moved over my decimal in the 1 and 7 tenths one spot, which means the decimal underneath the box, which is my dividends decimal, moved over one spot. Now each of those decimals is at the end of the number. You'll notice here that when I recopied my problem, I did not include the decimals. I could have, but basically, you know, when decimals are at the end of numbers, um, you don't really have to write them at all. So whether you put them there or you don't, it doesn't make a difference as long as there's no numbers that come out after the decimal. You don't have to write them, such as in this case. If you want to try to multiply, divide this guy out, which we should be able to from previous lessons now, because there's no decimals involved yet, you can go ahead and pause your video now and then come back and check your work. So 17 goes into 54 three times. Now I don't want to do 17 times 3 in my head, so notice that I did it off to the side and I got 51. When I subtract, I get 3, and I brought down my 4. And now I start over. 17 goes into 34 two times. 2 times 17 is 34. And I have nothing left over, so my problem is officially done. Your final answer for this problem is 32. Now I know these problems are being worked out pretty quickly and I know I'm sort of talking kind of fast on these, but what you can do is once you've got, got it written down, just rewind your video just by about a minute or so and then just watch the process as everything's being divided out without you having to worry about taking notes. And a lot of times that helps. So you may want to do that with the rest of the examples as well. All right, let's try one more here. This one's got a lot of zeros, but you're going to see that once we move those decimals over, it's not nearly as bad as it looks. So when I recopy my problem correctly, this is what it looks like. I'm going to move my decimal in the divisor over to the very end. That means it's going to move two spots over. So therefore, I did the same thing with my dividend, two spots this time. So now that decimal is going to go in front of that six. I'm going to recopy my problem. So notice how much friendlier this problem looks now that we moved decimals over and got rid of all those extra zeros. So I'm going to go ahead and start dividing. I'm going to put my decimal there, and notice I said that 7 goes into 0, 0 times. 7 goes into 6, 0 times. But 7 goes into 63, 8 times. 8 times 7 is 63. I get nothing left over. There's your answer, 8 hundredths. So we're going to go ahead and do one last problem here. 8 and 424 thousandths divided by 36 hundredths. Now I realize you may be running out of space at this point, so of course you could always turn the page and write on the next page. So we're going to set this problem up. We're going to move our decimal in our divisor over to the end of the number. So it's two spots. We're going to do the same thing to the dividends decimal, just two spots. So now it's between the 2 and the 4. I'm going to recopy my problem. And now I'm ready to start dividing. So I slid up my decimal. 36 does not go into 8, but it does go into 84 two times. 36 times 2 is 72. I subtracted, I got 12, and brought down my 2. 36 goes into 122 three times. 36 times 3 is 108. I'm going to subtract, and I get 14. I'm going to bring down my 4. 36 goes into 144 four times. And notice I did my multiplication off to the side. 36 times 4 is 144. I subtract. I get 0. I'm actually officially done with my problem. Now, one thing I want you guys to realize is, um, well, first of all, of all the type of math that I um, do, 
I love doing math, but the one thing I hate to do is this type of division where you're dividing by double digits. Um, it is not even easy for me. It takes a lot of me thinking about it and actually guessing, you know, trial and error. So sometimes I guess a number and sometimes I guess too small, sometimes I guess too high. So even for teachers and adults, it does require, you know, a lot of thinking. And sometimes we do have to erase and work a little harder to come up with better answers. Um, but that does happen even to me sometimes. So you just have to be patient and you will get better with it. All right, you'll be happy to hear that that's all for now. Um, there is an assigned practice that I do want you to complete, so definitely look at your task sheets to see what that is. And don't forget to watch part two. You don't have to do that tonight, but that will be your next video. All right, you guys, that's it for now. We'll see you back in class.